Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey, and subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, today, I'm going to be going over who I think is going to win every major conference tournament in college basketball in 2023. I would go over all the smaller conferences as well, and obviously, I think that teams like Oral Roberts and Florida Atlantic or Akron or even the College of Charleston, they have really good chances to win their conference tournaments because they're the teams at the top in those leagues. But it's going to be very tough to go over all those conferences because of the fact upsets happen all the time in these leagues. And all it takes is one bad game for those teams and they're going to end up losing. But as long as College of Charleston, Yale, Vermont, Fort Atlantic, all these teams play at a high level in their conference tournaments, they should be going dancing in 2023. But now onto the major conference tournaments. Let's start with the Atlantic 10. Now this one's interesting because you have teams at the top like Dayton, Virginia Commonwealth, and St. Louis that are the top teams in the Atlantic 10. But I think overall, if you look at these teams... None of these teams are going to be at larges in the NCAA tournament. And I think that VCU, they're the best team overall. So I'm going to go with Virginia Commonwealth to get the win in the A-10 tournament because I think they're the best team overall and they have to win the conference tournament to get an at-large bid. Now on to the Mountain West. This one's an interesting league because there's going to be some at-large bids in the NCAA tournament this year. San Diego State, Boise State, and Nevada do look like they're going to get at-large bids for the NCAA tournament. But teams like Utah State and New Mexico are on the outside looking in right now. And you even have teams like UNLV and San Jose State that are really solid. So any of these teams have a shot to win this league. And I think a team like New Mexico could be really dangerous because they were playing so well early on in the season and they just collapsed down the stretch. But if you look at a team like Boise State who just beat San Diego State, they're playing at a high level. And even though they're probably in the tournament field right now, they probably want to feel safe to make the tournament. While San Diego State, they have a lot more leeway. I think that Boise State's going to end up beating San Diego State in the Mount West Conference Championship game. I think the Broncos are playing at a high level right now down the stretch of the season and that's my pick to win the Mountain West. Now onto the West Coast Conference this one's probably going to be down to two teams you have Gonzaga and you have St. Mary's now obviously you still have BYU and San Francisco alive right now for this conference tournament but I think that Gonzaga and St. Mary's should win their games and if you look at these two teams Gonzaga's the more talented team and St. Mary's they play fundamental basketball and they already beat Gonzaga this season on their own floor and they could get the win over the Gonzaga Bulldogs but I'm going to go with Gonzaga at the end of the day to get this win I think that St. Mary's is really solid but Gonzaga's talent's going to find a way, and I think they're going to win the West Coast Conference Tournament. Now we're on to the Power 6 Conference Tournaments, and I'm going to go over who I think is going to win each one of these. Now these are still going to be really tough as well, just like the smaller conferences, because there's so many teams that are good. But if you look at the brackets, some of these teams do have more favorable brackets than other teams, and that's going to help out some of these teams. And all these teams are going to be at-large bids that more likely have a shot to win the Power 6, unless you do have a bid stealer, particularly probably from the Pac-12 if you do get one. But most of these teams are going to make the tournament. But starting out with the Big East, you have a loaded field. And if you look at the bracket, you have Marquette as the number one seed and they're going to have St. John's or Butler in their first round game, so more likely they should be able to hold out there. But then they have UConn and Providence on the other side of that bracket if they do win, whoever wins that game. That's going to be really tough. And you look at Xavier, they have to play the winner of Seton Hall and DePaul, and Creighton has to play the winner of Villanova and Georgetown. And overall, if you're looking at this bracket, I think Xavier has a fairly favorable bracket. Marquette, it's going to be really tough for them to get the win over UConn or Providence, particularly if UConn wins because they're rolling right now. So if you look at this bracket overall, if Xavier can get the win over Creighton. You're probably looking at this and it's going to come down to Marquette, UConn, or Xavier. My pick to win the Big East, I think the Xavier Musketeers are going to get it done. I think overall, Marquette has been the best team in the Big East this season, but they might slip up, especially if they have to play UConn in the second round. I think Xavier's on the better side of the bracket, and I think that Xavier, they're a great offensive team, and offense is really good in tournaments like this. I think the Musketeers are going to get the job done and win the Big East tournament. Now to the ACC, this one's interesting because you have a lot of teams that are really struggling in the ACC this season. And there's teams at the top of the bracket in most years are not near the top, especially the way that they're playing. And the number one seed is Miami, and they've deserved it. They've been playing really well this season, but still Miami's kind of a weak team to be a number one seed in a conference tournament like the ACC. And they're going to have to play the winner of Syracuse and Wake Forest. And you look at Duke, they're going to have to play Pitt and the winner of Florida State Georgia Tech. That's a pretty good looking bracket for Duke. And on the other side, you have Virginia as a two seed, and they're a solid team, but their offense has just collapsed down the stretch. And you're looking at a team like North Carolina. If they can beat Boston College and Louisville, that could be an upset pick against Virginia and 
Clemson, they're the three seed, and Brad Brownell's team has deserved to be the three seed in the tournament, even though the ACC has been down this year. But Clemson is a team that they've been slipping as of late, just like Virginia, and they're going to have to play really well if they want to move on in this bracket. NC State's a really tough matchup if NC State does beat Virginia Tech slash Notre Dame. So looking up and down this bracket and the way all these teams are playing, I think Duke's going to win the ACC tournament. It could be Virginia, Clemson, North Carolina, NC State, and a few other teams might have a say in this one, but Duke's been playing the best down the stretch this season, and if they continue to play at a high level, I think that the Duke Blue Devils will win the ACC tournament. Now on to the Big Ten. The Big Ten is a conference that's really deep this season, but a lot of people have mocked the Big Ten lately, and with good reason, because they haven't gone far in the NCAA tournament, and this year the Big Ten's had a cluster of teams that have all been around the same. Even up to this past Sunday, there were seven teams that all had an 11-8 and conference record, which is unbelievable, but overall, I still think the Big Ten's a really deep conference, and there's a lot of teams that have a really good chance to win this conference tournament. And a lot of people probably think Purdue's the runaway to win the Big Ten Conference Tournament, but I'm not 100% sure because if you look up and down the bracket, Purdue has the winner of Michigan Rockers in the first round, and Purdue did already lose to Rockers, so that could be a game that could give them some fits. Michigan State's the four seed, and they're going to have to play the winner of Iowa or the Wisconsin-Ohio State winner, and that's going to be an interesting for Michigan State because if they do play a team like Iowa, if Iowa gets really hot from three, that could be an upset bid for Michigan State if they do end up playing the Hawkeyes. Northwestern has to play Illinois or Penn State, the winner of that game, and that's going to be really tough for the Wildcats, even though Chris Collins, who is rumored to be getting a contract extension, and deservedly so, and he's gotten good guard play from Boo Booey and Chase Aldeej. Illinois and Penn State are both capable of knocking off the Northwestern Wildcats, and then if you look at Indiana in the bottom of the bracket, they're going to have to play the winner of Maryland or Nebraska-Minnesota. That's a very favorable first round game, even though Maryland is a team that already beat Indiana this year. It was at Maryland, and Maryland has not played as well on neutral sites or games on the road. So overall, looking at this bracket, Purdue has a really good shot to win the league, and so does a team like Indiana or North Western, but I'm actually going to go with Indiana to win the Big Ten Tournament. Yes, I actually think Indiana will have a shot to win the Big Ten Tournament, even though I know Indiana's never won the Big Ten Conference Tournament since its inception over two decades ago. Indiana has a favorable bracket. They've been playing very well overall, and if Purdue does get beat before the Big Ten Championship game, Indiana won't have to play a team that they already beat twice, and I think looking at the bracket, Indiana has a fairly favorable path. If they can beat Maryland, if that's who they play, and Northwestern does advance, Northwestern's a team that Indiana's already lost to twice, and it is tough to beat a team three times in a row. And I think that the Hoosiers have a really good shot to win the Big Ten Conference Tournament, and that's going to be my pick to win the Big Ten. Now, onto the Big 12, you've got a log jam of teams, just like the Big Ten. But unlike the Big Ten, people actually think these teams are good, and deservedly so. And if you look at all these teams, every single team in the Big 12, you can make an argument, should be in the NCAA Tournament, even though that's not how it works. A team like Oklahoma or Texas Tech, if they're not able to win the Big 12, won't make the tournament because of their record, but all these teams are really solid, and if some of these teams were in other leagues, they probably have way better records, and they would be at-large teams for the NCAA tournament. And since all these teams are good, even though Kansas is the one seed, they're not the runaway to win this thing because they have to play West Virginia or Texas Tech in the first round. West Virginia did give Kansas fits earlier in the year, but if Kansas can get by that game, they'd have to play the winner of Baylor, Iowa State, and that's a tough game, especially if Baylor wins because of all the guards that they have. And then on the other side of the bracket, Texas is going to have to play the winner of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. If Texas plays well, you'd think they can get by in that game. And if Texas can, they'll have to play the winner of Kansas State, TCU, which both of those teams have already beaten Texas this year, so it is very possible that Texas could get beat. Even though I think Kansas, Baylor, Texas, Kansas State, and TCU all have a really good shot to win the Big 12, I'm going to go with the Kansas Jayhawks. They've just been such a consistent team, and Bill Self's a Hall of Fame coach. He has a great team. They're really talented, and even though they just lost at Texas, it's going to be on a neutral site for all these games. It's not going to be on the road, but even though all these other teams have a really good shot to win the Big 12, Kansas is just such a consistent team, and that's going to be my pick to win the Big 12 Conference Tournament. Now, on to the SEC the conference where it just means more, even if it's just football, but still in basketball, it's going to mean a lot for a lot of these teams. Alabama's been the best team in the SEC in basketball this season, which is crazy to say considering they're usually the best in football. But now in basketball, Alabama's been dominant this year, and there's been a lot of other teams that have been solid in the SEC this season, but the Crimson Tide have been far and away the best team in the league. 
And looking at the conference tournament bracket, Alabama has a very favorable first round matchup between the winner of Mississippi State or Florida. Even though I think both teams are really solid, Florida's without Colin Castleton, and Mississippi State's been a team that while they have actually been playing solid at times, they have been fading a bit down the stretch. So that's a really good first round matchup for them. Missouri's at the number four seed, which they've been a really surprising team this year. They're going to have to probably play Tennessee, even though obviously Ole Miss or South Carolina has a chance to beat them. As long as Tennessee doesn't blow that game, Missouri's going to have to play Tennessee. And overall, if you look at that matchup that's gonna be very tough for both teams Tennessee might get the win over Missouri if they play really well but then they're gonna be really tired after Alabama more than likely is gonna be playing an easier game so that's a really good matchup for Alabama Texas a and is the number two seed in the SEC tournament, which is crazy. The Aggies have been really great this year, but it also kind of shows that the SEC might have a few cracks in it, and maybe this league isn't as deep as people think. They're going to have to play the winner of Auburn and Arkansas, and that's probably going to be the toughest first-round matchup for a team that gets the double bye, because Auburn and Arkansas are both tournament teams that are actually seeded a lot lower because they did struggle in SEC play, so that's going to be a really tough matchup for the Aggies. And then Kentucky's lurking at the number three seed, and they get to play Vanderbilt in the first round, or the winner of LSU Georgia against Vanderbilt and all those teams even though Vanderbilt did beat Kentucky at Ruck, Kentucky's probably going to want to get revenge on them and Kentucky should be able to beat LSU or Georgia so overall looking at this bracket I think the two teams that have the best chance to win the SEC Conference Tournament based on how good these teams are and the way the bracket set up is Alabama and Kentucky and even though Kentucky is probably going to be a trendy pick to win the SEC Conference Tournament I'm going to go with the Alabama Crimson Tide even despite all that's happened with their program in the past month and a half I still think they have the best team overall and as long as the Crimson Tide continue to play hard they should be the team that wins the SEC Conference Tournament. And the last conference that we're going to be touching on today is the Pac-12, the Conference of Champions, as Bill Walton would love to point out. And I think that this is a league that actually is better than it's been in the years past. There's more teams that are solid, even though there's not going to be many teams that actually make the tournament. I think that the Pac-12 actually is a league that has more talent and has a lot more teams that are capable of knocking off a team at the top, which could spell doom for a team on the bubble if a bid stealer does occur. But the Pac-12 also is a bit top-heavy, and as long as the teams at the top play well, then there should be no bid stealer. And looking at the Pac-12 tournament bracket, UCLA is the number one seed. They've been playing the best basketball so far, and they have Washington or Colorado, whoever wins that game in the first round. And obviously, Washington has Keon Brooks, so they have a star player, and if they can get by, maybe they could catch UCLA by surprise. Colorado, their best player, KJ Simpson, will not be playing in the Pac-12 tournament, so that really hurts their chances. But UCLA will have a fairly favorable first round matchup. Oregon is the four seed, which goes to show that Dana Altman has the Ducks playing much better basketball down the stretch, that he got the Ducks to a top four seed in the Pac-12 tournament. They'll play the winner of Washington State, California. Oregon probably will hope that California can get the win because that should be an easy win for the Ducks if California actually can somehow beat Washington State and then play bad against Oregon. But Washington State is a solid team. They've had a lot of injuries this year, but they're getting healthy. Muhammad Gay is a great player, so maybe that'll be a tough matchup for Oregon. Arizona's the number two seed, and they're the other star team in the Pac-12 besides UCLA. They'll have to play the winner of Utah Stanford in the first round. That's a game that as long as Arizona doesn't overlook either team, they should win. And then USC is a three seed and they'll have to play the winner of Arizona State, Oregon State. USC just played Arizona State in a thriller and got a close win over the Sun Devils. So if USC has to play Arizona State, that could be a tough matchup that they have to play again. But looking at all these teams, Arizona and UCLA are by far the best teams. But you do have a sneaky team in USC that if they can get by the first round, maybe they can knock off Arizona. And possibly Oregon, if they play at a high level, maybe they can knock off UCLA. But looking at all these teams in the Pac-12, I'm going to go with the UCLA Bruins to get the job done. They've been playing the best basketball in the Pac-12 this season, and if Mick Cronin can keep his team focused and as long as they play as well as they have in the regular season, they should win the Pac-12 Conference Tournament. So those are my picks to win the Power 6 Conference Tournaments in college basketball in 2023, plus a couple of the other leagues that I did cover. It's going to be really interesting to see who wins all the one-bid leagues, all the smaller conferences like the Summit League and the Ivy League and the American East. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. It's also going to be a lot of fun to see who wins the bigger mid-major conferences and the Power 6 conferences, and it will be interesting to see how many conferences I actually did pick right of the conferences that I did pick. But all in all, I'm sure the games will be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to watch them all. Comment down below what you think about my conference championship picks and let me know which teams you guys think will win these conference championship games subscribe to the channel if you like sports content like this video down below follow me on twitter as well and i will see you next time